Is this the vehicle that ends range anxiety for electric vehicles? And will it finish off the Tesla Model S? Let's see, how capable is it? The all new Mercedes EQS, the all electric S class, so to speak, but with an own platform. Let's directly begin in the front and of course in this part also the driving. Also coming up, nighttime review, exterior, interior, and also driving this vehicle at night. This will be such a blast, everything coming up. But first the exterior with a closed front grille in this star pattern. LED is standard for the main headlamps. Optional so-called digital light, it's a pixel LED light, also with projective functions. And you can see this really streamless design like a raindrop and most importantly, well in this case a two-tone design is a special, but you don't have to go for it. We also have a white vehicle for you, or a black one or a mild blue, I would say. But already here with the design clue, look at that, that the front hood is basically one layer and is overlapping here. Quite unusual design indeed, and you cannot open the front hood because there's the optional HEPA filter underneath that no one can actually touch it and that the room inside is used all the way. This is the only thing you can open here for the Viper fluid, and then you can fill in the Viper fluid yourself right here. It's the only thing you can open then here in the front. Very interesting. These here, by the way, are 21 inch wheels, already quite massive. Just one size bigger, 22 would optionally be possible, but these ones are already really, really massive. And even more special is in the side profile right here. Look at that, this is so-called one bow design stretching from the front all the way to the rear. This is also making a car so aerodynamic. And I talked to the aerodynamics manager and he told me when you reach a speed of 120 kilometers or something like 70 miles an hour, then the share of the aerodynamics in the range capability is 50-50. So at this speed then 50% is due to the aerodynamics, how efficient the car then really is. Air suspension is standard for this one and even more special here in the rear, rear axle, 4.5 degrees rear axle steering is standard. You can literally see that, but the one you see here on our shots is the optional 10 degrees rear axle steering. This, by the way, also is thing like, you know, like in online gaming, when you buy a special sword or something, this is something you just activate by software later on. Hmm. So you basically have it all in the vehicle, no matter how you buy it, but you have to pay for it extra, although the car is already capable of it. What do you think about this strategy by the car manufacturers? Quite unusual for cars, but already usual in other industry segments, definitely. And here the rear, directly, with the lights, Look at that, stretched all the way around with the light signature right there. And once again, it's really seamless design. And it's interesting that nowadays we see a car that has this form follows function. So this is more a functional um, approach saying like, we want to be as aerodynamic as possible and then combine it with the design and not design first. What do you think about this approach? The length here at the blue vehicle, 5 meters 22 or 205 inches, so lengthwise indeed comparable to a normal Mercedes S-Class. And here interesting 20 inch wheels, rather close style with a star pattern and also this all black vehicle which has I think more elegance than the two-tone paint, but the two-tone paint of course looks more interesting. Top speed by the way, 210 kilometers an hour or 130 miles an hour and there will be two different, let's say, acceleration versions so far. Either a rear-wheel drive version, 450 or 450 plus, and an all-wheel drive version, the EQS 580. The all-wheel drive version, 4.3 seconds in the acceleration figure. That's, of course, super, super quick. We will experience that today on the road. And then I'll also tell you later more about the real range. What will we have? Two different battery sizes or two different battery sizes available, 90 kilowatt hours or 108 kilowatt hours net, the bigger one we drive here today. And this will give you a range up to 700 kilometers or 400 miles. You can reach that actually, but let's see what we will reach later on today. About the recharging here, 11 kilowatt AC is standard, optional 22 kilowatt AC, come on, they could have made that standard. And then the DC charging is up to 200 kilowatt, but they promise a good charging curve. But what does it mean? We exclusively have the charging curve here for you. For reasons of sustainability, Mercedes is using less cobalt but more nickel in their battery cells. And for that, they say, with a 400 volt architecture, 
they can charge quicker than with the 800 volt architecture, for example, what the Porsche Taycan, the Audi e-tron GT, or the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6 are using. With the 800 volt EVs, they indeed have higher peak charging and some of them also overall charge quicker like the Porsche Taycan. But here with the Mercedes EQS we can see, yes, it doesn't have the highest peak charge, so around 200 kilowatt, but then it carries over the high charging for a quite long time. So up to 20 minutes, more than 150 kilowatt, and always more than 100 kilowatt. And overall then that means that you get from 10% to 80% in around 30 minutes, and that's actually very decent. You know, everyone needs hobbies and Maybe you know one of my hobbies is to dress accordingly to the car in the colors. And I think today is maybe then, yeah. Which two-tone paint do you like better, mine or of the car? So let's see, when I approach the vehicle, if the door will open automatically, this is an interesting function. And no, it doesn't. Okay, one more time. Here now, door handles fold out. When I approach a vehicle, I had to activate the function first in the infotainment system. It was off with this vehicle and now it's on. And when I'm here now, then the door opens automatically. So it was actually our fault that we didn't activate it before. Very interesting feature. And we know, for example, also from the Tesla Model X that there is this feature that the door also closes automatically again when you hit the brakes. And this time, Jonas <laughs> got to step away because the last time was hit with the camera. Here we go. And this is also the closing function. Nice. This is the car key. Really heavy, really premium alike. But here this, you know, catches fingerprints on the inside. Then door closing sound. It's actually quite solid, although it is frameless right here. And also you can see this dual insulation glass. So it's also really soundproof. And this one, well, as an alternative to the door closing sound, you also have the soft touch here, uh, soft close here. There we go. And of course, this is the needed for all these automatic functions. There is one side effect, so to speak, for these automatic doors, because um, when you open them normally, you know, like this, then this happens. <laughs> because by the electronic power here, you know, in, in this area, they get, you know, kind of like a no normal push and then they also swing back. So you have to pay attention to that. <sighs> Maybe I just would pick very plain normal doors and that's it. It's also an option. Then seating here, this is a so-called comfort seat in a very special styling. There's also a sport seat available. We've shown that to you in our studio episode already. And the comfort seat is available with Artico high-grade leatherette in beige like this or in black. However, this here is the optional animal skin, which is not really logical that they still offer it in a car where they claim sustainable luxury. So they were not as daring, for example, as Tesla in this case than here. The sport seat, by the way, also available with a microfiber surface on the inside. So that would be the other animal-free option for the seat. Steering wheel, you can also order an animal-free steering wheel so far only on demand, not in the configurator. Later on with the true AMG model, it will also get a full microfiber steering wheel, but that is then only for the true AMG model and not for the AMG line. Hmm. However, steering wheel here, controlled up and down, in and out, in and out. There we, <laughs> there it goes, out, it was in, in all the way. Here, this new steering wheel design we knew from the S-Class and the E-Class facelift, with this slot <laughs> design, or, uh, I'm always make fun of it. And then here with these capacitive buttons, oh, why capacitive buttons? It has some kind of haptic feedback and also a clicking sound. So for a capacitive button, it's good. Still like, you know, sliding for the cruise control or clicking then here on one button. This car is, you know, easily 100K, although prices are not out yet by the time we shoot this video, but why do we have the cost savings for one button here? I don't get it. Screen setup, zoom more to that. Everything digitalized with the so-called hyper screen, but that's even an option. And seating position here is actually, of course, fairly comfortable. It feels like being in the normal S-Class actually seating wise. And this is my favorite here, the uh, microfiber cushion. This really, oh, it's so cuddly. This is lovely. Might it be a danger falling asleep while driving? I don't know, but. Assistance system, uh, you know, all the assistance system, though, you know, then 
<laughs> here headroom gets really close with one meter 86 or six foot one so there we feel this low roof line but still it still works for tall elves and here we also have the panoramic roof with a slider and let's see I'll probably activate the there we go and again these sliders i think totally unnecessary technological advance yes please for safety for more comfort but capacitive buttons and sliders we have to do something about this yeah <laughs> it takes a while when you don't have like these very straightforward commands Ooh, screen screen screens but of course here yeah. The ambient lighting is my actually the favorite thing. This looks so amazing with the ambient lighting and when you change the temperature, it also acts accordingly like warmer or colder. And this is cool setup, of course. The color in general can be changed. As for the screen setup, two different head-up displays available. Soon more to that. The second one with augmented reality, then 12.3 inch digital instruments, always like this. The middle part, would usually start with 12.8 inch screen like this in the vertical way, like in the new S class. And then on the right side, you can pick different deco elements. This option here is the so called hyper screen with the swinging form, 7.7 .7 inch larger screen, and then also additional 12.3 inch on the right side. When you have this hyper screen option, this and this is OLED as a display. And of course, here, really impressive. It's also like curved you know, like in the inside. And the production way is like when you produce, you know, like real high class glasses, very interesting. We are in the Zurich area here today. This is the Lake Zurich. So um, very beautiful area. And we also explore even more beautiful areas today. Um, you know, like Lake Lucerne here or Vierwaldstätter See in, in German. This is one of the most beautiful lake districts actually all over the world wheel drive there today very interesting so this looks really impressive the main menu hit the home button then like this so the icons are very well to see very well to read actually settings let's take a look at that you can set so much and the menu goes really really deep for example also activate or deactivate the creep mode uh, it's not the most easy user interface you get used to it a little bit and here also this always stays in the same place but of course it's better to use real climate knobs than using the touchscreen while driving of course there's also this mbux system in here hey mercedes hey mercedes how can i help open the sunroof i'm opening the sunroof nice this is of course really cool then you can save some of the capacitive <laughs> control functions and so, and so on. Yeah, or maybe like, hey Mercedes. Catching. What's better, Mercedes or BMW? The same as you do. Otherwise, we would not be sitting here. Oh, otherwise we would not be sitting here. Yeah, that's daring to say, right? <laughs> well, and this is... <laughs> where it all came from, 300 SL going. Have you recently seen our special episode, History of the Mercedes SL? You should tune into that episode. And this, of course, here is all the way the future. And sound system and Apple CarPlay integration, of course, this song here should not be missing on any playlist. An all-time classic for sure. And the Burmesa 3D sound system here, really cool. So that sounds good. And this is the CarPlay integration. I mean, this is huge <laughs> indeed. Um, but the thing is, the screen is that large that from the normal driving and seating position, you will, I mean, I have long arms and long hands, so for me it's okay. But if you're a little bit shorter, even when the seat is more forward, it can be a problem to reach something that's like here and then while driving, that's also a little bit distracting. Middle console here, beautiful matte wood. Mm, that's what we love in other fuel. Then let's open that one here and we have, uh, you know, you can put out that whole thing here to have like a more open area here. That would be possible. Other than that, <laughs> we can also push it like this. Oh, I can also use this one here. Can you, 
you know, put your beverages right here, and then you can hold it maybe right driving like this, you know, like. <laughs> so an inductive charging pad here in the very front. Uh, I had the CarPlay running wirelessly, but you can also connect the cable so you have the choice. And then, what's this? Here you start the vehicle and there's also a volume knob for the co-driver. This shouldn't exist. <laughs> and here's the fingerprint sensor for you, may, I don't know, for your Bitcoin account or something. <laughs> no, it's uh, that you can access the EQ menu or have an own user profile and then maybe you go into a future Mercedes rental and have your settings already right there. But then again, this is one field. Why? I mean, in a 20k less car, but here in a 100, 150k vehicle, what is this supposed to be? Why is it one button? Come on, cost savings, really? Hmm. Yeah, and then split opening. This is great build quality once again. There we go, classic Mercedes. Another inductive charging pad and two more USB-C chargers. Digital instruments, to me, they have a strange angle like this. Usually instruments are more upright and they are more visible and also more hidden deep inside. This way, they are really bright and, um, you know, kind of like, open to light from the outside, not ideal, I think. But what's really cool that you can change the views, also have the map all over the place like this. It looks really fancy. Also have, for example, sports gauges and so on. And it's also reasonably fast, but again, control just via the capacitive buttons at the steering wheel. Head-up display are always good to have, either at the first option or in the secondary option. Then you will also have the augmented reality arrows. Well, and since this is the S-Class of electric vehicles, let's start with the executive seating. <laughs> Push the seat all the way to the front. And by the way, this seat here, the driver's seat, is set to my position, and that would be here. Still, of course, plenty of legroom and headroom. Gets kind of close, but of course, still tall adult-proof. And here, of course, I have more space then. This is the climate unit here for the rear. Um, the seating position here on this normal bench is, I would say, average. It's not specially comfortable. It's rather stiff also from the seating surface. The cushions here for your head, these are really, oh, these are amazing. But the seating position in the rear itself is nothing special, I really have to say. Interesting with this split panoramic roof here. The one is at the moment open because, you know, it has a kind of layer over it. And then we have the middle console here. There's also a you know, third seat, but you can also fold this down. And then you have more controls here, some space, and like the charging pad. You can put also this control unit if you like, but you also have here these um, two 11.6 inch screens. So these done for the rear entertainment, but I always find that these are not really necessary as for safety and so on. But other safety features are really good in the EQS. And also noise insulation wise, they apply already insulation foam in the raw chassis. And also this car is full of airbags, so that's really well done. One thing, when you're an EQS owner and wonder how does it work here in the, in the rear, or if you will be an EQS owner, this is kind of like a smartphone holder, but then we've tried to figure out like, how can I get out the cup holders? Damn it, how does it work? Yeah, that's the trick is like you open it just once and then don't push it all back again, just like this. And there it is <laughs> with the cup holders then. Um, yeah. Enjoy your beverages. <laughs> By the way, here, these rear screens, you can basically do the very same things you can also do in the front infotainment system. Now let's fight the trunk. 610 liters up to 1,770 liters. Quite massive and of course so well usable. Also in comparison to Mercedes S-Class, here the length is 47 inches or 120 centimeters, quite massive. And the width here, in the most narrow point, a little bit less than a meter or 38 inches. And of course a little bit, you know, a little wider than in, in this area. So it's actually a good result. 16 inches or 40 centimeters here and even higher than here where we go up to 22 inches or yeah, almost 60 centimeters right there. You can see here easily fits in in a vertical way, this cabin trolley. Of course, when it's here in the bright way, maybe not the best for the kids though. <laughs> here you can store your charging cable. This is the only possibility to have it in a clean way because there is no frunk whatsoever. And of course, this cover here can also be taken out. Wow, this 
opens really very high. Could be a problem for a basement garage, indeed. Um, wouldn't fit in mine, I think. So let's see, child safety test. Well done, as we know from Mercedes in this area, they're always very good. Welcome to the darkness. Here, what's happening here? Wow, this is our nighttime special. Look at these, door handles illuminated, door opens automatically, and also then here in the front, the signature at night. This looks really amazing going all the way across the vehicle. Yeah, that's the way. And here, that's the way. <laughs> you remember that quote? Then here, the puddle light, classic Mercedes star. And there's more to come on the interior here at the moment for the entry. A bright styling, bright, bright illumination. But there's even more spectacular stuff to come. You could let here automatically then switches on the ambient lighting. These blue lines, of course, all colors can be picked. And there's even more to come here at nighttime. This is really beautiful. This is also very special. Come closer again. So I turn on the ignition. And then I wait a few seconds that the main light is shutting off. And then you can see the blue ambient light here once again. And even the seat belt holders, you see the red dots here, how the seat belt holders are actually illuminated. This is also again, really, really special. And then also here, the rear door handles. So at nighttime, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the exterior design, I have to say. And I didn't have this, I want this car feeling. But seeing this now at nighttime, it really gives me this, damn, maybe I need that car feeling. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Wow. This is one of the reasons I'm doing this job, to have moments with you together like these. Wow. This way, by the way, the screen is all the way off at the moment. So the ambient lighting is really Central ambient lighting is even counting more. Let me turn it on again. Let's take a look. Here we go. Now the screen is on again. You can see the full integration. And you might look at the colors. They also change a little bit. And they, as we showed you earlier, also change according to the temperature, for example. You can have all in one mono color, but also more colors are possible. Let's go through some of the schemes here. Ooh, this is more bright. We have this one. These are all the multicolor schemes, which are, of course, a little bit more impressive. Venice pink. <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, burning blue. Malibu sunset. Well, this is also cool. Amazing. Energy shine. Why don't they have a like, oh, ocean blue would be like the Thomas blue scheme probably. This is really beautiful. But you know, the one we had initially, which is ultramarine, this is also really cool because you know, some purple effect that's changing a little bit, then the blue, I really love this. And monochrome, then you can pick here between 64 different colors actually. Well, it's also like machine gun, you know, like, <laughs> shooting the colors. Wow, I could I can do this all day. Maybe I'll just get one of these, not to drive it, but to play with the ambient lighting. <laughs> so I think I'll stick with this one. Of course, brightness and so on, I have it all the way up. And um, as for the climate unit, um, this is of course even better to see right here. So let's see it, we turn on that AC and then you can see here, wow. This looks even more amazing than here when we make it colder or warmer once again way to go do you also know <laughs> the illuminated roller coaster mode look at that here ambient lighting changing according to recuperation or acceleration and also to driving in the curves <laughs> this is party at night without music Welcome to the Mercedes EQS driving part and you see it here in the screen the visualizations of the buildings here in the Zurich city center on the left side the lake really beautiful and impressive to see in the GPS 
That's the fancy side of it. The downside of it is when the light is really bright from the outside, it's really harder to see it because it's so open. And one thing, soon also more to countryside driving and higher speed accelerations on, but here in the city, one thing already, it's so extremely silent in here. And this superb noise insulation comes together with the electric drive and they play together very, very well. That's 120 and we're gone. Wow, super impressive. That went well, right, Jonas? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Jonas, he's, he's seen it all. I mean, when he was like you know, on the racetrack with me and we we're doing drifts all over the place and so on, he's like, I was like, oh, you know, I don't know how he's coping at, with that with the co driver. but. Wow, really spontaneous acceleration and still here, super silent, 120 kilometers an hour, or yeah, it's around 70 miles an hour, 65 miles an hour, and absolutely silent. The air suspension is doing a great job. It's a super, super smooth ride. On the one hand, like this air carpet-like ride. On the other hand, it's, it's crisp enough, so especially when you are in the sport mode, then you have enough feedback and it's a little bit stiffer and when you go for the comfort mode then the suspension is giving you a little bit more comfort so you can really just adjust it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know, there was obviously a, a non-vaccination um, advertising car. Yeah, if you want to try that, good luck. So then what about the assistance systems? So sitting here, cruise control on the steering wheel. You can click it to set it and also swipe up for one or two kilometer steps and click it for 10 kilometer steps. Again, capacitive buttons to control it, not ideal, but it's somewhat okay. And wow, it's just a, such a smooth ride. So hardware-wise, suspension-wise, steering, the aerodynamics also, of course, account for the good noise insulation because the wind is directed so well. This is awesome. The insulation is so great. Wow. This is really an awesome piece as for the driving. But once again, I have to say the user interface. We've had so many situations now, like here at the moment, we can hardly, uh, we, we've set the screen to maximum brightness. The sun is coming in, some fingerprints all over the place. It already looks kind of shabby, hard to see it. There are so many different elements on the screen. You, you do not know where to focus. And that's the thing with the Tesla, for example, where they have also huge screens, but they focus on the things that are needed. And here, it's like, I don't know where to look at. You know, it's like, where should I actually, like, what's the information here? And if we would count all the elements here, we see at the moment the single individual elements would be maybe like 150 or something. So my first impression here, hardware-wise, acceleration-wise, chassis-wise, insulation, superb, excellent everything software related wise really doubtful I have to say that nevertheless a great motorway vehicle and now of course the question is also about the economy and let's take a first look at that so we have the reset right here we had one acceleration in here and at the moment we are at about yeah, it's about like 20, more than 20 kilowatt hours on the 100 kilometers at the moment at 28. But now we're going downhill and also on the motorway. We were in city traffic before and had the AC running, but there were also actually good temperatures outside. We will drive a very long time today and also in the next few days. And so we will keep you updated with our progress. We also keep it at city speed here in Switzerland. It's really, really expensive if you get a speeding ticket. Wow, what a view already on, uh, on the Zurich Lake. Wow, beautiful landscape here in Switzerland. Just can recommend a trip right here. But we'll closely monitor the fuel economy. This will be updated for sure. Let's see about that later. Well, 
acceleration from the get-go. Slightly uphill, but let's see how that works. Zero to 80. That was zero to 90 and really have to be careful here in Switzerland again. So yeah, got everything under control. Wow. And I mean, that was slightly uphill. Wow, that was super quick. And how smooth this all-wheel drive distribution is. Since it's basically rear-wheel drive, this platform, this electric platform, or you have when you have the single motor, the real one, it's still rear-wheel biased, even if you have the two electric motors. And that's, of course, good for the sporty driving. It has massive wheelbase, of course. That means it's rather meant for <laughs> driving straight as for the wheelbase. But two factors. Center of gravity is super low due to the high weight of the batteries. And this rear axis steering has such a great, I mean, you could so well see that even from the outside. So at lower speeds, the rear wheels turn into the opposite direction, kind of fakes a shorter wheelbase and also a turning circle of a compact vehicle than here. This arrow I also see in the head-up display. It's augmented reality function here for the camera and also in the head-up display at the same time. It's a redundant thing. At the same time, sometimes you think about where should I look? Like there, 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 or there? <laughs> you have to learn to concentrate on one thing. Yeah, so that's again a lot of redundancy and a lot of tech overkill really in this car. You have to somehow learn to you know, get along with that one. But once again, the driving dynamics, astonishing. And of course, also better than with the combustion engine Mercedes S-Class because you have the low center of gravity right here. This great acceler uh, accelerating um, from the electric motors. The torque is directly there. Yeah, and impressive rear axis steering. We also know it from the normal S-Class. Um, when you get the extensive, op extensive option is of course even better than with the 10 degrees. When we're driving faster, by the way, they're going in the same direction than the front wheels, so you have a little bit more stability. Now some beautiful countryside driving, and I mean, I kind of can't imagine that a car with that kind of wheelbase is so much fun to drive. It feels so agile, although it's so long and has such a long wheelbase. That's probably the most impressive thing here about that vehicle. So no matter if motorway driving, countryside driving, or here in small villages. I hope you enjoy the landscape views with us. The EQS here, driving-wise, really great performance. As for the range and consumption figure, I earlier said what's like maximum possible when you put it like 80 kilometers an hour and set it on cruise control or something. But for the realistic energy consumption figure and realistic range, Mm, it doesn't look like we would scratch the original figure. At the moment, we are about 25 kilowatt hours and more kilometers. That's kind of still kind of high. And that would be more like 500 kilometers of range or more like you know, 300 something miles of range. So let's see about that. We'll again follow it through a couple of days, hundreds of kilometers, and then we we'll have an even more realistic figure at the very end. And now, Wow, what a view once again. Very beautiful area here. Let's see also more about here on the map. Pinch and zoom. Yeah, I know it's, it's really a little bit distracting. And there you can see once again Zurich, Lake Zurich here from above. And here also at the side of the road. Such a beautiful area to drive this vehicle. By the way, here you can also pick a different sound experience and it will also have an influence on the acceleration. I'll pick the whip flux now and just try to listen if there's something it's even more stressed than in the sports mode, for example. So when I accelerate here. <laughs> that sounds a little like, like back to the future or something. Let's test silver waves. Accelerate, then listen again. Okay, that's more like and then roaring pulse. It's supposed to be like more, you know, 
fiery, aggressive one. Let's listen. Like, but I think the roaring pulse, although it's supposed to be like the sportiest one somehow, it's the least audible one, you know? It is, yes, low frequency kind of, but the other ones are more audible. Or what, what do you think? So I tested now all three. Which one would be your favorite? Looking forward to your input. Really important here, of course, also with the electric vehicles is the recuperation. And there are actually four different modes for that. And I can control it here with the shifting pedals. Normal recuperation is always when you start up, no matter how you ended the ride, it's always no in normal recuperation. I would have loved that it actually starts in the mode again which you ended the ride, but that's not what they went for. So left click is increase recuperation, then when I get off the throttle, car is decelerating. It's not exactly harsh one pedal driving feeling, it comes close to it, but it's not the strongest recuperation if you, for example, compare it to a Tesla or something. With the right shifting pedal, I go to normal recuperation again or to no recuperation, and then here lift the foot of the throttle you're just rolling. And then the other alternative would be hold, press and holding the left or the right pedal. And that brings me to the so-called intelligent recuperation. That's something we've already experienced with BMW, for example. So normally when the road is free, you're rolling. But when either the map data indicates a roundabout or a sharp bend or something or an intersection, then the recuperation is active. Or when the vehicle is in front of us, then the recuperation is also active. And that might be something to consider. Mm, as I said, in the BMW it was working very well. And here, for example, foot of throttle, we are just rolling, 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 rolling harsh. And when we approach these vehicles here, still off the throttle, and let's see what the car does. Keeping the distance, still rolling. Or maybe here, yeah, here, with a cyclist. Even this, yeah, sensors picking up the cyclist. That's also very good. Now, I did nothing acceleration or deceleration wise, so that worked quite well. You can you hear the roaring pulse. Let me just change it to vivid flux again. I'm still waiting for these modes like Star Wars spaceship, Stargate spaceship, like different sound worlds, or like V8, V6. Why has no one done that? I mean, so much tech in the car, why don't they put some fun elements in it? Even Tesla doesn't do it um, to create just more, you know, yeah, let's say useless fun in there. But I think it would be cool if you could also like, well, like W12 or something sound. Why not? Yes, they don't want to be connected with that anymore with electric wheels, but hell, why not? Just do it and it will be fun, definitely, you know. So here again, Vivid Flux, let's see, sorry, wait, one more. You also hear like a acoustic feedback when hitting the brakes, at least we here in the vehicle. Not sure how audible it is really on the microphone, but comparing, for example, to the Porsche Taycan, where in the sport mode it's really kind of loud, this artificial sound here is not that loud, actually. So, and the intelligent recuperation, that could actually be a very reasonable mode. Other than that, if you're rather an experienced EV driver, you might also fancy the just the highest recuperation and that's it. At least then you also have these possibilities to just pick it. And if you're stationary, you can have it on P and parking, and then hit the throttle and you can test the sound modes better because then it's even better audible. That's the first one. Now the second one, the red flux. And third one, moving pulse, wait for it. Ooh. And now we have the very first good average. So we went uphill, that's why the, uh, the energy consumption was a little bit higher. Now we went downhill again, so almost 100 kilometers, and 
We're now at about 17 kilowatt hours on one kilometer, so 27 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. And that means we can really get close to the official range figure. So this here at the moment would be something you know, like 390 miles or 630, 650 kilometers. And that is indeed really decent. And so far we have not driven a vehicle with a higher range. that driving it at night. Do you also want to join me driving here the EQS with me through the night up the hill? Amazing experience. Check out this video, a separate video on the night riding right now and let's go.